Yo, what's up, guys? It's the MMA Analyst here to give you my predictions for UFC 149. Uh, definitely one of the best cards uh, I can think of for a while now. It's actually crazy. Stacked from top to bottom. It's almost like what I envisioned UFC 200 would look like. Um, obviously, you can't blame the UFC on this. Fighters got injured. Uh, nine or ten or something like that. A lot of good fights didn't happen. Some f entire fights were scrapped. It's just, uh, you know, unfortunate. But it gives other people a chance to fight. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know about it being a pay-per-view event, though. This is probably not going to be too uh, in too much of a pay-per-view um, sale. The numbers aren't going to be too great. Anyways, Uriah Faber versus Henan Barrow. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, I got to look at it like Henan Barrow. Obviously, his main issue, if he has one, is obviously the potential of his cardio. Being a five-round fight, if he is unable to, uh, you know, finish this fight, uh, or if he ends up on his back... And, you know, stays there. Like, you know, if Uriah Faber implements some kind of a, a solid wrestling game that doesn't end up with Barrow um, submitting him. Or, you know, all the different situations that Barrow is actually very uh, aggressive with and can finish. But if he is unable to do that, then uh, we all know Uriah Faber is going to be able to drag this fight, make it a dirty, ugly fight. Uh, Faber can go on for days, running around, jump around, doing all type of dumb stuff, and he won't get tired. It's just, it's that easy. We know that about Faber. He's also, you know, pretty good with the wrestling. His striking is, mm, it's okay. You know, it, it, it works for his game. But at the end of the day, uh, it's in his best interest, Faber's best interest for this fight to go as long as it possibly can. With every round, Faber's chances of winning increase. Um, end of the day though, I think, uh, the fight's not going to go on and on and on and on. I don't think it's going to make it past the second round. Uh, the thing about Barrow is he's got solid jujitsu. He's got solid striking. Um, and I think, you know, he's got crazy training partners, uh, Jose Aldo. So I think when it comes down to it, it's going to be... Barrow being able to just be aggressive and not have to worry about the repercussions. Not have to worry about, well, what happens if I get taken down? Because, well, first of all, it's not going to be easy takedowns, I don't think. But if he does get taken down, then you've got Barrow able to attack off his back, maybe sweeps, all that good stuff. If it doesn't get to the ground, Uriah Faber is in a lot of trouble. So I have uh, Hen and Barrow taking this fight within the first two rounds by... Um, most likely, um, I would say like a submission after a, some kind of a strike. I don't see him knocking out Faber out cold. It could very well happen, but I think that he would, you know, knock Faber down, jump on him, and uh, get the uh, rear naked choke or something like that. But he could use a variety of various uh, submissions because he is good like that. All right, next. We've got the debut, finally, of Hector Lombard. He'll be taking on Tim Boach. Um, Tim Boach was, uh, you know, on the nice side of, like, one of the best comebacks of the year. But we have to think about why he needed to come back so, like, why it was so important. And it was that because he was getting completely outstruck, like, absolutely demolished on the feet. Now, when I say demolished, it's not like he was getting, like, just dizzied up and dazed all day long, but Yushin Okami was able to just jabs and cross, nothing too crazy, and he was able to tag, um, he was able to tag Boach a lot. And, uh, if Okami had any killer instinct in him, he would have done what, uh, what Boach ended up doing, which is just turn it up a bit. Just turn it up and end that fight. But he kind of has one pace, and I was saying about that about him all the time. Um, he has one pace, and if it's working, it's working. And if it, it's not working, it's not working, but it doesn't go up or down. And uh, that's something that is going to be a big problem for Boach because Hector Lombard, his single pace is basically uh, ends up in a knockout or some kind of finish. He hasn't been fighting the greatest of opposition, 
Um, but it doesn't change the fact that in all of his 35 fights, he's only lost uh, two of them. So, you know, that's crazy. He also has a draw and no contest. He's got one of the biggest winning streaks in MMA right now. He is undefeated since his last loss when he was 7-2. and two. Now he's 31-2. and two. And, uh, yeah, wins including, you know, Brian Ebersol, um, James Tahuna, uh, you know, Dirksen, um, you know, just pretty decent names. And then some, obviously, much smaller names. But like I said, it's not like Tim Boach is this amazing step up in competition. Tim Boach is going to have potentially, um, you know, he'll be strong. I don't know if he'll have the strength advantage. Lombard's uh, great on the ground, you know, with his jujitsu. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, he's solid with judo. His stand up is crazy. Um, you know, black belt in jujitsu, fourth degree uh, black belt in judo. Um, stand up out of control, knockouts all day long, 17 knockouts out of his wins, uh, seven submissions. So, well rounded fighter. And I think that when he starts tagging up Boach, there's no comeback story this time. I think he just basically hits him a bunch of times, and eventually Boach is unable to control uh, his body and he just crumbles under the pressure. <clears throat> Hector Lombard, um, TKO before the end of the second round. I think the first round will be like a complete beatdown, maybe even a knockout in the first, and then they kind of just, you know, dust up what's left of them in the second round. Czech Congo versus Sean Jordan. It's kind of crazy. I don't normally mention betting stuff a lot on this side of things, but uh, Sean Jordan is the underdog. I'm just going to say that, well, I, you know, betting on Czech Congo is not always the best idea anyways because he's just so wishy-washy, but whoa. Sean Jordan is the underdog. What has he done to to be the... I mean, what has Sean Jordan done to be the favorite? Sorry, Sean Jordan is the favorite. Czech Congo is the underdog. That's what I mean to say. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this is a pretty easy win for Czech Congo as long as he just, just fights normal. You know, his last loss was to Mark Hunt. Solid, striking, heavy hands. Just, uh, just owned him on the feet. But uh, Sean Jordan, I don't know, like, uh, you know, most of his fights, he keeps the fight on the feet. Um, you know, he's got nine knockouts, three submissions, but against who? You know, his biggest win was definitely LeVar Johnson, who, you know, anybody can take down LeVar Johnson. So at the end of the day, it's kind of crazy. I see Congo being better on the feet. I see Congo's wrestling being enough to keep it on the feet if Sean Jordan does decide he wants to take it to the ground. And uh, and Sean Jordan's chin isn't all that great. So I think if Congo hits Jordan, um, Jordan's lights out. I'm picking Czech Congo either by a sloppy EU decision or a first round knockout. Brian Ebersol, James Head. Uh, Got to go with Ebersol here. Uh, you know, veteran, uh, really good at everything. I mean, at least, you know, striking's on point, his grappling's on point, he's aggressive, and he's finding ways to win. Uh, a solid winning streak for him. This would be his fifth in a row in the UFC, and I think like his uh, 11th or 12th in a row in general. His only loss you know, over the last, well, since 2007, was to uh, Hector Lombard. So anyways, I've got Brian Ebersol basically... Doing whatever he wants. If he wants to keep this on the feet, he can. If he wants to take it to the ground, he can. But I have him defeating James Head. I don't see James Head being the guy to uh, interrupt Brian Ebersole's, um I don't know what kind of story it is, but his, his continued success with, obviously, his older age and all that stuff. So uh, that's a pretty simple one there. Um, I'd be surprised if James had won that fight. And then Chris Clements versus Matt Riddle. Hmm. Am I going to pick Matt Riddle? The thing is, you know, Chris Clements, very wild striking. He is able to land those punches on certain folks. Um, but they're very wild and just they just don't look too great. And uh, But the problem is, Matt Riddle's striking is horrible. His wrestling is okay. He's... Way too cheery in that cage. Um, at the end of the day, I kind of feel like 
I could pick Riddle. I could pick Clements. This is a pretty close one. I think this is the toughest one on the main card to pick. I'm not even really sure who I'm going to go with. But I keep thinking that, you know, Riddle's going to pull this out. Um, so I'm going to go with Riddle. I do remember Clements having a little bit of a cardio issue. Does Matt Riddle also have cardio issues? I forget. I'm going to go with Matt Riddle by a very sloppy decision in a in what could be a very close fight. Court McGee versus Nick Ring. I'm going to go with Court McGee to bully Nick Ring and get the win. I'm going with Francisco Rivera over Roland DeLarm. I'm going to go with Anthony Paroche over Ryan Jimmo. Ryan Jimmo finally making his UFC debut. He's on a big winning streak. And uh, he's spent a lot of his recent time just, I think, just trying to keep that winning streak. Um, very not too aggressive. And I think that uh, that will not help him in this fight. Not to say that Anthony Proche is an animal that's going to run in and rip his head off. Not saying that. But I think Proche can uh, do enough to get the win. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, going to go with Gannon over Caraway. Pineda over Carvalho. And uh, Kuvenin over Clark. So there you go. UFC 149. Actually, the end of my last video, I think it was, I didn't say MMA is important in the video, but actually, if you'll notice, I kind of just cut myself off. Oh, damn. I didn't do that. I cut the video off and um, just wasn't able to really take the piece from the end and make it make sense. But I did say MMA is important, and it is important. Peace.